Hey guys, it's Khan B, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about particles. So yes, this is a Rec Room Studio tutorial, and I know you guys have been asking for more of these, so yeah, we're just going to jump right in. I am not going to go into too much detail on particles. This will be just a brief summary to get you started, but hope you enjoy it, and let me know what you create. And before I get in, also... Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm super close to 5,000 subscribers. It would really help me out. But yeah, let's get on with the show. All right, so to get started, we're going to create an empty and we'll just label this as particles. And that will help us out when we make this dynamic with Rec Room Studio. And then you'll just wanna right click on particles and add an effect and it would be the particle system. So you'll see that it has this default soft circle shape and for now we're just going to keep that um, a few things that i think are important we're not going to go over every single one of these because that would take two hours but we'll start with duration so if you do forget what any of these are just hover over them so duration would be the length of time that the particle system is emitting particles so if we ramp that up it's going to obviously have a faster duration but let's keep that at five for now do we want it to loop? Most likely you're going to want a looping animation, but some, once in a while you'll want just like a single burst. Um, do we want a start delay? So do we want it to start after a certain amount of seconds? For me, I'm probably going to leave that at zero. And what lifetime <laughs> is the particle system going to last? If we increase this, you'll see the particles keep going and let's undo that for now and we'll keep it at five the start speed okay this one's interesting you and for any of these with an arrow you could actually click on them and you you there are options so you could have either a constant start speed you could have a curve you could have random between two constants so if i have a curve here i could select my curve of how i want those particles to emit so as you can see it's starting off a little bit cluttered and then it kind of gets a little bit further apart that's because of the curve but if I change that it'll be the opposite and yeah that's just a fun thing to note but for now again we're gonna keep that constant uh, oh well so the start si size is important and usually I'll keep this between two constants so I'll say between one and five and you can see the size of the particles vary between one and five. And that's cool to give a little bit of a variation. If you're looking for that, maybe we'll do one and two for now. Um, do we want to rotate the particles? No, we're not going to rotate it right now. Or if you want to flip the rotation. What color do we want the particles to be? So do I want yellow particles? Do I want a gradient? And if you click on this arrow, you could change it, let's say, between green and red. So, yeah, we kind of get every color in between from the green to the red. And that's just a cool little effect just by using start color. Do we want a gravity modifier? So do we want the particles to be affected by gravity? Obviously, if you increase this your particles will start drifting downwards because of the gravity. And yeah, this would be helpful maybe if you're doing like a water fountain or something of that nature. For now, we'll just, we'll give it a little bit of a gravity. You know what, no, we're gonna, we're gonna give it a lot of gravity. We'll give it a one for now. Uh, what else? We, do you want it to play on awake? So do you want the particle to play the second you get into the game, or do you want it to be like a one-off, maybe for a gun effect? For now, we'll keep it on play as a on a week, but we'll probably change that later. And those, for me, are the the most used uh, inputs that I like to play around with under just particle system. But then you have even more options that you could select. So emission, like how, how many particles do we want to emit at a time? Uh, what's the rate? So how much are emitted per second? And 
the more you have, just keep in mind the laggier your room will get. So try not to go crazy. Uh, for now, I'll just keep it at 10. Shape. Okay, so shape is the shape that the particles are emitting from. It's not the shape of the particle themselves. So let's actually bring the gravity, if I can find it, back to zero. So it'll be easier to show. So you can see that right now we have a cone and it's emitting from a cone. We could change things like the radius of the cone or the radius thickness. And that's just for cone, but you also have sphere, which I use a lot. And you have rectangle and you have all these other different types of ways to emit particles. I do tend to use the sphere and probably the cone the most. And sometimes the donut actually, that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, right now we'll keep with the donut and maybe we'll just adjust how it's coming out. All right, so next up, we'll want to, you could change the velocity over the lifetime. So it's like how fast the particles are going. You could, you could change that, you know, it could start off slow and then fast or fast and then slow. Um, that's up to you, but I'm not going to play around with that right now. You could do the color of the lifetime. So do you want your, the color of the particles to change over the lifetime? So again, this is like a gradient. We'll go crazy and we'll start with purple and we'll go all the way to maybe orange. All right, next up we have the size over the lifetime. So again, do you want the particles to get bigger over the lifetime or do you want to get them to get smaller? And this would just be a curve. So in this case, we have a curve showing that the particles are going to get bigger over the lifetime. We can keep that for now. And if you want to mess around with the rotation, you can, but for this purpose, I'm not going to. Uh, some people like to play around with noise, so it just, it just makes it feel maybe for like a more natural effect. You don't want the particles to look like they're all coming in one direction evenly. And you can play around with what that noise looks like for now. We'll just keep it as it is. Collision. Do we want to these particles to collide off of maybe walls or off of people? Um, so that would be like the bounce. And do we want to dampen the particles? So are they going to slow over time as they hit different objects? You'll also want to make sure you adjust the kill, kill speed depending on how fast you want these to die off. And for now, we're not going to be using collision. Next up, this is one of my favorites is trails. I love trails. <laughs> I don't know why there's just something about it. You could see right here, you could have a secondary trail that's following your particles. I don't know why I enjoy it. And you could also pick the color. You know what, I'm going to get rid of the color over the lifetime. I think it'll be easier to see and yeah, you could change, you, you could change the color of those trails. Um, maybe we'll do like a light blue that kind of looks cool. And one last thing that I want to go over is the velocity over lifetime. So if you're looking for more of a swirl pattern, you could change the orbital over here and you get that cool tornado like effect and you could change it on all different types of axes. And for now, I'll just take away the noise so you could see it a little bit better. But yeah, it looks kind of crazy at the moment, but you could kind of get a cool galaxy like effect. All right. Another important thing that I'd like to note is if you're looking for more of a flat particle system, you could change the 
under shape, if you change the scale of the x-axis to zero, you get that flat shape. And you could, again, change the orbital, maybe increase that, and you kind of get that cool swirl time warp type of thing. I don't know, there's a lot you could do with it, and again, you could play around with all of these different pieces. All right, and lastly, just one other bit of advice. You can actually have your own custom materials, that, or particles, I should say, other than using just this base input. It could be any shape. You could also have custom ones. So, for example, if I go to my Snowball Soccer, and I take one of these particles that I had, and let's just copy that over to the studio tutorial. Next, I'll want to create a material, and we'll call this Snowflake. One thing to note is you do want to make sure that whatever object you're, or image you're taking, that it does have transparency. Um, that's why it's showing black at the moment. All right, and if you do not yet have an image with the background removed, just go into a free program like Photopea, and you can just do Magic Cut, and that will actually take out most of the colors and whatever's remaining. You could just manually click on with this tool and delete, and then save it as a PNG. So yeah, that's just a quick bit of advice. Now, next up, once you have your image dragged in, you'll want to create a material. Like I said, drag over your base input and make sure you check the surface type to transparent. All right, so if you do want to keep your cool trails as well as the snowflakes, you'll just want to make sure only drag over the material to one of these items and you also want to remove the trails off of there. So now we have both the green spinning and the snowflakes. These will be happening at once. Um, how do we get this to play in Rec Room Studio? Well, first let's turn this into a prefab. All right, now that we have this as a prefab, I clicked into it. And for now, it does not look like I have functions, so we'll just do an event, and we'll call this play. And what do we want to play? We want to play this particle system. And we want to play this particle system. And let's go to particle system, play, and particle system, play. All right, so right now, it will automatically play because I believe, yes, we do have play on awake, so let's go test this out. All right, here we are in Rec Room. As you can see, we have this cool green twirl pattern as well as the snowflakes. And yes, I did not, I just set this up to play on awake so we don't have to do anything special, but if you want to use the unit event, make sure to watch my other tutorials on how to do so. I hope this video helped you out on your journey to learning Rec Room Studio. I think particles are one of the most fun parts about Rec Room Studio, aside from the props and the terrain and all the other cool things you could do, but particles go crazy, experiment with all the different options. There's obviously more that I haven't even covered, but hope this helped you out. And if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.